both both warehouses. Um, so I, I can I think I can say that there, we know they're connected to city water. I believe the front building is connected to city sewer. The back building, um, you know, we're we're not sure of, but I think it probably is connected to city sewer too. I think it runs. I had to guess. I went out there today. There's a sanitary sewer manhole in the back, and there's a clean out pipe that looks like right next to the sanitary sewer manhole. Um, I'm gonna probably just got that. He's got it on here. Um, I, I think that's the sewer line that runs into the front building. And if I had to guess, I bet the back building is tied into that front building sewer line. But um, we don't know the answer to that. But yes, uh, I'll I'll building properly connected. We believe they are already. You know, it's a little it's a little weird. Mr. Carter just told me now that there's one meter out there that serves not only the two back buildings, but also the traditional flooring building. So in front on more than one meter tradition space, Mr. Carter for part of the water bill. So nothing's perfect. I mean, uh, this it just it, it's an older property that's been there and we're trying to make it work. Um, Connections should also include, include at least one internal fire hydrant for these fire code requirements. Uh, the applicant does have an issue with this requirement. Um, I understand that there are safety reasons for this. That, that you know, from the city's perspective, they, they believe there are safety reasons for this. But um, you know, Commissioner Willis, Mr. Bailey made good points. I mean, this, this property has been there. It's been in the city. It, it was annexed in. Uh, the previous owner uh, never had to comply with that. The use really hasn't changed in the back. Uh, there were offices back there. There were storage back there. Um, and Mr. Carter, he told me not. Look, I don't even want to use the back as an office anymore. If it's going to complicate things, we'll just keep it. We'll use it for warehouse and storage. And you know, people may walk through and see what I've got stored back there. But in terms of having a cash register or a, a, a service staff uh, back there or offices back there, you know, we don't need to do that. So um, I say that because I think the, the, the safety concerns are probably diminished a little bit uh, by the fact that we aren't going to have offices back there. And I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you, we might have to change the the proposed site plan, but um, he's comfortable with just using his warehouse and storage with the thought that some clients, some customers may walk through there to look at the items that are in storage. Um, but in terms of paying for stuff, checking out, sitting down in an office to consult, the front building will be used for that. But you know, this this requirement, it, 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 it's <laughs> I don't know, you know, we haven't got the quote, but I'd venture to say it's twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. I mean they've got a four under Gornto Road. They've got a four under Gornto Road to run a, a, a fire main. Um, and then run it all the way back to the building. So I mean I would ask that that requirement be stringed, that last sentence uh, of, of number four. I would ask that you consider that. You know, based on the use that was there, based on the fact that the previous owner never had to do that, uh, based on the fact that really the use hadn't changed for that back building. And it's my understanding that, that there's no problem really with, with getting fire access to the front building. It's just the back. And that's my understanding. So uh, I would ask you to strike that last sentence on number four. Uh, number five. Upgrade the existing main driveway to better allow for two-way traffic flow and support the way of emergency vehicles and provide a proper turnaround as approved by the fire marshal. Uh, Semi's already used that, that roadway, that gravel roadway. We get there are deliveries from Semi's uh, on a daily basis or a weekly basis. So, you know, we know that gravel driveway will support semi-tractor trailers. Of course, it'll be proof roll and we'll, we'll certify that uh, to the city and the city will have to be comfortable with it. But, um, that's fine. And the fire marshal, it does need a proper turnaround. Uh, I believe that was that was contemplated in the site plan. Um, 
install a proper driveway apron and entrance connection at Lawrence Air Road as approved by the city engineer. Um, you know, my, my concern with this is just that I don't know what the city engineer is going to require. And uh, maybe the city engineer is waiting on our engineer to present something to them. But uh, it's a little bit open-ended. And it's my understanding in talking to Mr. Martin that really what they're looking for here is uh, an asphalt or a concrete driveway apron just within the right-of-way of Gornto. So I believe gravel is not being pushed out to the road and two cars can turn in unimpeded. But you know, I went out there and looked at it today and uh, there's a big utility pole right there. And so I, I don't know how much we can really widen it. Um, you know, so that, that concerns me. And just having all these open-ended items, I mean, as y'all can see, yeah, we're here for a PD application, but most of it's permanent. Nine-tenths of these conditions are permanent. And so uh, I guess we'll get to know the permitting department really well. But that is a concern. Um, and are we agreeable to that? Well, it's, it's pretty open-ended. I know it's going to cost my client some money. Um, so, you know, I'd like to see it stricken, but you know, I'd like to actually strike that second sentence on that one. Um, th and this property is, has always been a commercial business and always maintained that, that entrance and exit that it has. And number six, maintain the existing natural vegetation at, at the southern end of the property as shown on the approved master plan, as well as existing trees and other vegetation along the northern property line. Restore the required, and that's fine, restore the required vegetative stream buffers along Sugar Creek and natural vegetation in accordance with, the approved, with an approved landscape plan. Um, Just before I came here, I went out and looked at that. I, uh, there's a fence that runs along Sugar Creek. I think the only real area where the fence, it, 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 I guess it's the fence between the city's property on Sugar Creek and the applicant's property. And the only area that, that the fence really runs close to Sugar Creek was in that 25 foot buffer is on the northern property corner. And it's my understanding that, according to the applicant, there were some dirt mounds there that he moved because they were impeding, they just looked bad, and were impeding some of the access if, if vehicles ever wanted to travel back here. In doing so, he may have ripped out a few underbrush. I don't think it was anything major. Uh, but, you know, this is one of those things that I think that vegetation, whatever's there, will grow back. Probably just tall grass. Um, can we can we present a landscape plan and pay a landscaper to do this and install a landscape? Yeah, but it's one more it's one more thing, and uh, it's, it's one more requirement that I don't really think it's needed. Okay, um, so I would like to ask you to strike that that last sentence. Um, number seven, outdoor storage trailers. The six existing tip trailers can stay. No more trailers. Uh, what we put in, like I said, he used the existing trailers that were there. Uh, the dock properly inspected and altered if necessary to ensure compliance with all applicable building and life safety codes. I understand that all that's really needed there is a certification from an engineer that that dock is solid, uh, won't, won't fall in, it. and uh, I think we can meet that. Uh, number eight, dumpsters or refuse containers uh, need to be on site so not negatively, negatively impact your debris. There is a rollaway that uh, the applicant keeps out there now and they do pile, they have a lot of boxes when these uh, furniture items are delivered. And so those boxes are put in that rollaway and it's, it's far away from the creek and up behind those mm -hmm. trailers, but that is hauled away every, every week. Um, I told the applicants warehouse manager when I was out there like two of those because they do so much with uh, furniture and boxes. Um, but that requirement will be complied with and uh, trash won't be accumulated. Number nine, signage. Uh, that's fine. Sign permit applications uh, can be submitted. 
and really with the side of Trump, it, it's not, I mean, he, he's got some lettering on the side of the buildings. Uh, and you can't even see it from the road. There are two two signs up on the corner of uh, Dornto, right there on the top left, uh, that will remain. Actually, the, the white sort of picketed sign may be replaced, the, something that I think the applicant would, would rather do, but the size of it will remain. So I, I really don't see the sign permits uh, or sign of an issue. Um, number 10 is um, sort of a catch-all. <laughs> I don't know what, what's going to be required here uh, from, from engineering and permitting. Uh, I did run through this with Harris Surveying and Engineering and asked Rod McHenry uh, how much time he thought they needed to get all this done and to meet with the engineering department determine what, what needed to be done, and he respectfully requests that uh, y'all give him another 30 days, maybe 90 days. So, and that's that's straight from the uh, engineer survey trial. If we could get a little more time to abide by that request. Um, and then number 11, with the one year, uh, I understand the reason for that. I think anything that's going to be done out there will be done within the year. So, we're right there with that. Too. Sorry, did I take up all, all 10 minutes? Uh, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions for the speaker? I'd like to just run through a couple of things, if I may. That's fine. Uh, I won't leave up another 10 minutes. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I was just looking through here, like the fire hydrant. I mean, that, I, I don't know, personally, I don't think I could do much with that, that that's a code. The, uh, I have no idea what a proper driveway interest is or what that would entail, I don't, I don't know what proper for me might not be proper for somebody else. And restore the required vegetation, is that a big issue, is there, there's been something cut down or something that there's stream buffers there. There's one mandated by the state and then there's one by city code. Um, the state mandated one is not supposed to be disturbed at all. That's the first 25 feet back from the stream. And then there's another 25. Yeah, and part of it too is you look at the rest of that condition, um, sort of the trade-off is to exempt the rest of the property from internal landscaping. Well, that's not that. So in other words, recognize the property as being isolated and put landscaping efforts onto the street buffer to protect Sugar Creek and then forego the rest of the landscaping. Also keeping in mind that usually planted landscaping with parking lots um, and driveways tend to be pretty little shrubs and trees. Um, I spoke with the city arborist about the stream buffer because this is not something that has come up very often and what that would entail and he's very flexible but simply to install native species where none currently exist. And I footnote that because there's already some vegetation, I mean, not all the vegetation is void, there's still a bit of vegetation left behind. But simply augment it with native species that you've planted and then leave it alone and forget about it. And let Mother Nature take care of it just as if Mother Nature had been taking care of it all these many years. And the last item was the 90 days, would there be a problem with I personally, and I gave this a matter of while ago, I think 60 is generous. Um, we debated to require 30 days for some of it. Some of it we recognize as probably needing 60, and that's why we went with 60 for all of it, so it would not be piecemeal. But could, some of these things are already underway. You proposed a uh, number six on the screen button, and the uh, natural vegetation you're, you're getting away from the mic. I'm sorry. Maybe if we could condition that on um, restoring the required vegetative stream buffer within the 25 foot state mandated stream buffer. It's bad enough. Uh, that, was, you, was that your intention? That's the main concern. The, the city buffer can be disturbed. You just can't put back pavement, which is not, I mean, not part of the plan anyway, and that's fine. It can be grass. I but also keep in mind there's a sewer easement through here that you have to at least maintain some access mm -hmm. to. But yes, yeah, the first 25 feet, that's the most critical. 
That's the only concern with their first point. That's the primary concern. That's a state thing. Because Correct. Because of the creek being there. The, 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 my feeling on this is, and, and looking at that piece of land, and I don't mean any disrespect to the landowner, that piece of land can't be used for a lot of things. And if the man's going to spend his own money, make something nice out of it or nicer, I'd like to be as generous as we possibly could without putting somebody at hazard by violating codes and that sort of stuff. I certainly don't want to go to that extent. This is a lot here. And I didn't hear a lot of complaints other than that fire hydrant, which could run into some money. And I don't know, I don't, I'm just, that's outside of my area of expertise. I have no idea what the fire marshal thinks about that and how it went so long without it having been there. And then why would the city not provide fire protection and make the landowner buy his own fire hydrant? I don't know, it's outside of my area. Yeah, All right, I, we got I, one, one question. One question, so I'm just curious, I'll wait until the building, but Matt may answer. And so if the applicant says that building C doesn't want to do any kind of office, retail, sales out there, just want to just use it just strictly for storage. Storage or warehouse. My question is, is trying to get office in C, was that, did that trigger all this stuff? And that, that's a good question because, and Matt, maybe we have to get back to the fire marshal on that, but I have a feeling that may have triggered some of them. Well, it's the occupancy of the building. Um, using it for storage with customers walking through. I mean, a furniture store is also storing furniture and yeah. customers walk through. And I, I apologize for just raising that tonight. You know, Mr. Carter and I were just talking, and I think he's coming out he's comfortable not in his office. So, um, the building's already partitioned. It, it, it was used as office. Yeah. Okay, there's an entrance of time. We're gonna. I'm gonna move the agenda. I mean, we'll be here for a, a little bit of time. I think we're we're all kind of. I know I'm ready to go. So um, we're gonna kind of move the agenda. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? There being none, I'll now have a discussion amongst the commissioners. I don't, Mr. I understand the cost of the fire hydrant. It's extreme. Uh, the fact that it has never been there uh, is, I, I can't answer that question, no one can. But I cannot, uh, I don't think we can go against uh, National Fire Code as far as that fire hydrant uh, for, for safety of, of even if it's just a warehouse and it catches on fire and you have people working in there, you have to have the ability to control it. I just don't feel right. I, I, I know what y'all are doing down there is, is great. That's a, a piece of property that was nothing to begin with and y'all trying to turn it into something. But uh, I just don't, uh, I wouldn't feel right by doing away with that requirement. <coughs> All right, any other discussion on this particular item? Yeah. I guess I agree with you all. Most, most of these conditions are health, safety, and welfare conditions, and specifically the fire hydrant. We are, I don't believe any of us are qualified to make any judgment on that at all. Uh, perhaps with that sentence there needs to be changed to indicate that um, the, the development needs to, move, needs to meet the appropriate um, life safety and building codes. So I don't know if that's going to mean adding one or two fire hydrants or not at all. So I would rather the permitting process take its, um, do its thing and, and uh, work with the applicant to make sure that um, building codes and regulations are properly met. Would that be OK? All right. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Asphalt or concrete. Um, the city, like the other cities, have standards for commercial driveways, how they connect to a public street, um, minimum width, <coughs> materials, turning radius, things of that nature. Okay. 
So within the right-of-way portion, which is going to a road, not private property, you know, this is from the engineering department, is to put in the standard commercial driveway there in a minimum way to accommodate two-way traffic, like a commercial driveway for two ways designed to do. Well, from what I saw today, the city's got to give a driveway stretch to get it to expand. Because I don't believe they're going to have, I mean, this is just, just sure long and ridiculous or something. You know, because if you're limited on space, I can understand that. And out there, you got, you got power poles sitting there, and a guy wire coming down. <coughs> you know, what are you going to do? Get George Power to move the power poles to accommodate, you know? Mm -hmm. Could they, like, could they press yeah. that? I'm just curious. Yes. They could, and there may, there's, I mean, I've walked that entrance many times. I mean, there's, there's room there. I mean, the driveway that's there is almost, you know, it's almost wide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I, typically, it's, all, it's like a six inch thick apron of concrete. You know. And the easements, where the spring fiber and signs are. And still, is there enough to accommodate? Well, there's a, a distance between the signs and the driveway, and you've got the existing width of the driveway. We haven't seen a plan for it. I mean, in the right of way of Warrenshire Road, there should be plenty of room because there's no guy wires. And that's that's got to be concrete asphalt. Hey, but this condition number six, though, is technical. Not sorry, not number six, then. Number five, which talks about the main driveways, right. it's technical in nature and it needs to be properly developed and uh, detailed together with the engineering department. I don't know why. I don't. I don't believe we have the. I, I personally don't have the qualifications to sit here and tell them that they need to do it. You know, it needs to be provided. I know that proper access, adequate access, needs to be provided and the details need to be figured out together through the permitting process for the engineering department. But as far as being specific enough to saying that an apron needs to be provided, I think that's, to, to, to say that as a condition it seems to be a bit too much. And it may help if I could put this in perspective on how the review process works. This is a conceptual mm -hmm. development plan, it's not in detail. Just like with any rezoning or conditional use or others, these get circulated to all the city departments for review and comment. With the plan development, it's a little more detailed than a rezoning would be. There's an actual conceptual side plan. City departments sometimes struggle with this because it is not detailed plans, but their instructions, and it works well, is for them to look at it from a conceptual standpoint. If there are major concerns that they see, they forward those back to us as mm -hmm. comments. Okay, so what you are seeing in these conditions are major concerns that arose even from a conceptual drawing that they foresee being an issue when the actual plans get turned in. And it's good for the information and the decision makers mm -hmm. to know what these major issues are up front. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're worded the way they are. And, you know, in truth, many of these go without saying they're mm -hmm. based on city codes that may not have flexibility or on international building codes. Um, plan development gives you some flexibility with city codes. You sort of write your own development standards, but that's only for city codes, like city stream buffer, for example. Um, but not fire codes, not state mandated buffers, that type of thing. So there just may not be much flexibility there, but well, even without these conditions, the planning for the planning is going to take part of it. People is going to take part of it. Uh, the only thing is the, the fire hydrant, uh, and the, they're not going to uh, buy off on it without that in there. I'm talking about the uh, so. Uh, I think the conditions may be a bit uh, just overstating. But like I said, the only one that I, I feel I have a problem with is the, the fire hydrant. I just don't see, I don't see how we can say that we don't need that condition. But would the, plan, would the plans be approved without a fire hydrant? Now if it doesn't mean fire code. Okay. I'll leave the rest of She said you want to rewrite it some way, put different language in there saying it's got to meet the codes. I mean, that's a given. Yeah. A lot of, that's what I was saying is that a lot of these conditions are 
what you get as part of the permitting process, and you have to you have to address them. But I'm, I don't feel that these are conditional um, items as part of the plan development review or the plan development application. All right. If there's no further discussion, I'll now take a motion from the commissioners. Regulated buffering in Sugar Creek, just that 25 foot of buffering. Or we could be a little more specific in Nathan Town for them. Number seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm gonna give them. I'm gonna make a motion. We give them 90 days if it takes it, because there's a lot of say 90 days for this reason. Obviously, I've been going back and forth quite some time. We're dealing with an unusual piece of property that probably is not going to be as, as I think Mr. Raker may have said or whatever, not going to be a lot of business is going to be able to go in there. You have dead property if not. So I, I think we need to give them a little more time if they feel like it's needed. So I'm going to say 90 days on that. Number 11. All right, we have a motion on the floor. You know, I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? The bring none. All in favor? Do so by just raising your right hand. All those opposed have the same right. Motion passes five to one. The last